Hello everyone and welcome to how to get a career mode working for the Realism Overhaul set of mods in Kerbal Space Program. This video assumes that you've created an installation as per the instructions in the how to install Realism Overhaul video and then added the part mods and uh, visual mods in the third video in this series playlist uh, which you can find in the video description and so now we want to get a career mode working and if we take a look at the spreadsheet that we used previously in those other videos uh, we see that there is this tab called RP0 and RP0 is the career mode and um, apparently there are tech tree issues right now uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. In the previous videos we had some issues uh, first of all uh, when installing um, Venstock revamp I was for some reason there was a link that was old and uh, this is a more updated version updated for 1.2 clearly it's a more updated version based on that and so it's this github.com slash venven slash stock dash revamp slash releases and so uh, we'll get it from here this was kindly uh, pointed out by uh, somebody in the comments so I'll just download this and when updating mods uh, please do delete the original folder and then put the new folder in. Now you have to be aware of the dependencies of the mods and so if you update a mod you should take a look at other dependencies. Venstock Revamp doesn't have any dependencies. Uh, a lot of the mods will come with their own dependencies like a module flight integrator. I didn't install that separately that came with another mod so when, uh, when I see that that comes in a folder with another mod I'll uh, just uh, delete that and put the new one in. Um, RSS Visual Enhancements though pointed out one of those odd situations where the way we get to it if we use the GitHub it doesn't always show what the requirements are so in some cases you just have to remember well RSS Visual Enhancements requires Scatterer and it requires those uh, Environmental Visual Enhancements plugins but not the configurations those are two separate zips and you don't want the configuration zip because RSS Visual Enhancements itself has the configurations. Okay, anyway, uh, let me download the new Venstock revamp and then we'll continue. Alright, so here we go, Venstock revamp and unzip. It's quite big, but again, replacing the default textures and everything, so quite understandable, and it's done. So, the next thing is Texture Replacer. If you recall in the previous video, I was unsatisfied by our skybox. And so uh, we'll close Venstock revamp and Texture Replacer is on the recommended list. So that's good. We like things on the recommended list. And we want the first thing on the recommended list maybe? Yeah, okay. So lots of possibilities. We'll go with the GitHub because it usually has the most updated things. You have quite a lot of texture packs to pick from. But I'll show you the skybox that I use. And so texture replacer, it says fixed for 1.1. I don't anticipate it'll have, hmm, is there a version for 1.2.2? Good question. Well, it looks like this is more updated. Okay, uh, I'll go with this one. I wonder if this page has a better link to Texture Replacer. I have Texture Replacer in other installs. It looks like this one has the range machine link here, which is the one we got here, which was in the thread on this page, which is actually where this linked to. So that's good. Very organized. Um, I wish there was an official update to Texture Replacer, but so um, once you take this link, you go here, and then you find this uh, one and it's this link and that brings you to here and you can download from there complicated but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes um, okay so we've got texture replacer it's a tiny little plugin it lets you replace textures obviously and let's check that there's no game data folder inside no there isn't and so we can just plop that in and then once we've got that in, let's get our skybox. You can get it from uh, the front page of this thread, or I'm going to get it from Teflon Mike's Twitch. And Teflon Mike's Twitch, um, I want skybox. And I don't want the screenshots. 
I, uh, well, it's up to you which version you want. It doesn't need to be that big, honestly, uh, to be still quite impressive. Uh, let's try this one. I liked uh, 24 meg sounds reasonable. Okay, and in the skybox folder, we see the texture replacer folder, and then we just take these and plop them in like that. Okay, now we have a replaced skybox. All good. Now, um, and actually, texture replacer, I don't know if uh, RSSVE requires it, but it just works well with it. Um, so now we focus on career mode. Now, that's a little bit tricky because RP0 isn't officially. Uh, released for 1.2.2 and we see this qualification here it is green no obvious issues we see the other uh, requirements here and as a rule I like to install the requirements before I install the mod so first let's get community tech tree community tech tree is uh, just a folder like this and there, there will be custom tech trees uh, in the RP0 itself so this tree.config is what modifies community tech tree. Stock extensions continued is a bit of a complicated situation because not all of the parts actually have realism overall configurations. So we could probably delete some of them is probably a good idea. And if we take a look at this, is the RP0 realistic progression zero main thread. If we take a look at the front, uh, it gives you these requirements, realism overhaul, obviously, real solar system, community tech tree, lack stock extensions, which we're downloading right now, but it says, although only the engines have RO configs as of yet. So keep that in mind. Event stock revamp we already have, and then that leaves contract configurator and custom barn kit. Those are the only requirements, and then we're done. Uh, so keep that in mind. Those are the only requirements and everything else is going above and beyond. We already have some good mods for engines and of course we can make our own tanks with procedural parts so, and uh, procedural parts you can see is recommended B9 procedural wings we already have recommended uh, procedural fairings we already have recommended and um, deadly reentry we already have I, I we will probably install all of these um, Terabi uh, it, it isn't really helpful for very long uh, once you get past the initial very initial parts of the of the playthrough you probably don't need those parts anymore so I tend to leave it out we're going to skip the dep depreciated parts it says here deprecated parts um, fire spitter plugin retractable lifting surface and stock extensions remember that those come with stock extensions here uh, fire spitter plugin is required for quite a lot of things actually and um, really helpful so a lot of uh, airplane related stuff will require that. Retractable lifting surface has to do with the special airplane parts that, well one particular wing that uh, stock extension has that I really like. So as far as the parts go, uh, you really, uh, the aviation parts may or may not be configured properly. Probably not. And uh, core tech, the science you could keep um, Really what we're interested in is in rocketry and these engines and some of them, the Vanguard engine in particular is going to help you for the initial part of career. Uh, some of these will have uh, realism overall configurations, some won't. Uh, altogether, however, it says stock extensions because it uses stock textures, so the overall size of the mod is not huge and a lot of it has to do with the internals, 16 megabytes is the internals in the cockpits these are the cockpits that are in sorry about that uh, in the aviation uh, command these have the cockpits there so it's up to you what you want to keep and what you want to ditch uh, we, one way to approach it is we'll just start up the game and see what says it's not non-RP uh, non-RP0 or non-realism overhaul and because the entire game is loaded into RAM initially, you can actually delete the parts while you're playing the game. Uh, so you see that that part is not viable, then you can just delete it in the folder, it won't stop you. You can't delete the plugin like that, but you can delete the parts. So that's helpful. Okay, so that's stock extensions. Uh, the next thing we want, um, contract configurator. Okay, and of course this allows 
RP0 to create more appropriate contracts for real solar system. The issue here is that the default contracts are not going to be any good for real solar system and so we need custom contracts, we need a custom tech tree um, to accommodate all the parts that we are used to using in, uh, in the order that they ought to appear. Okay, and custom barn kit uh, changes how the buildings work. And custom barn kit, make sure there's no uh, game data folder inside, and it's done. Okay, Kerbal Renamer is up to you. Um, it is a recommended mod. I don't use it myself. I, I sort of find the default Kerbal names cute anyway. Um, test Flight I do use. So I'm going to install Test Flight. And it's actually not on this list, interestingly enough. But uh, we can get it here. And another one I use is Kerbal Construction Time. And definitely ScanSat. Adjustable landing gear is not uh, 1.2 compatible right now. Um, and RP0 is playable without it, so we leave it out. You'll remember that we installed some parts from FASA. We'll prob and Bobcat Soviet Engine is right on top of the supported list, so do that. Uh, we already have that in. I'll install the rest of FASA because I want the Mercury Pod, Gemini Pod, and Apollo Pod, and uh, Lunar Module. Uh, Lunar Module. So yeah, definitely want that. So Test Flight is here. Test Flight uh, makes it so that your engines may fail, and that you have to. The more you use them, the less likely they will to fail. It's just your engines, and it also has limited burn times for the engines because engines, you know, normally can't run forever. So, yeah, you're going to have to pay attention to that. Uh, if you're just starting out with realism overhaul, I don't recommend uh, using this just yet. But if you're a little bit more experienced, uh, then go ahead, right? Uh, this says uh, for 1.1.3, and mind you, this is a plugin. So we want to make sure that we get the plugin version that is for uh, here 1.2 updates. That's 10 days ago. I'll just take this version. I, I feel a little bit happier about it. And uh, when you get this sort of complicated situation downloading the dev build, uh, find the game data folder and what you want is the bit in the game data folder. We also need the configurations for it though. All realism, hold on. What's that? Uh, it, said, it said something important. All realism, what, what, what does this actually say? Uh, removed from test flight and are not managed and provided by realism overall directly. Okay, well, so we don't need any. We used to have to download the realism overhaul configurations from test flight, but apparently that's built into realism overhaul now, so we don't have to get those from here. Oh, wait. Now that I've. For some reason, the other link uh, was no good. When I click releases here, it gives us a proper build here. I'll just get this, but it looks like Realism Overhaul takes care of... Uh, see, if you use Test Flight with stock, you'll have to download these configurations. But uh, let's just get this version. And so once again, when uh, updating mods, or in this case, fixing uh, failed install, just delete the old folder and put the new one in. Okay, and uh, I want Kerbal Construction Time. Kerbal construction time is exactly what it says. It means your rockets take some time to install. Make sure you have this magic core dot DLL and so you're gonna take those and then copy them both like this. So that ends up there with module manager there. Everything seems to be alright. Okay. And uh, ScanSat. ScanSat gives you more science stuff so it can't be bad. You get to scan planets and have additional contracts and that'll give you more science. And since the text tree is overall bigger, that's helpful. Another mod that I often add and again does the same sort of thing as ScanSat uh, to give you uh, more options as far as science is concerned is the Magic Orbital Sciences. It's, uh, it's supported here so that uh, we've got AIES engines B9 Aerospace, I'm so surprised it's completely supported but uh, there it is 
Space Shuttle, we'll have to get into that in a different video. Uh, habitat pack, big little habitats, I recommend, but I don't know if there's... Um, I don't know if the RO supported habitat pack is still updated. There is a newer one, but that doesn't use the same names for the parts that the old one does, and so the RO configurations don't modify that properly, so it's very complicated. Universal storage could be fun if you want to make really good looking probes. Um, I'm not going to add those in right now. Uh, Raider Nix mods, if you want to do Soviet rockets, and use the Soyuz pod, that's the place to go. Also it has a lot of good uh, early US rockets uh, if you want uh, to get his US probes and rockets pack. So those are all options, you can find them on the forums. Just type Raider Nick and you'll get all those threads. So, but now what I really want to do is actually install RP0. And we saw that there was a tech tree issue. So first we want to, is there an official pre-release? Nope, there's no official pre-release. So we're going to have to grab this one. Okay, it was updated two days ago, that's good. So again, find the game data folder, and then that's the one we want. Okay, so in the thread for RP0, we see on the last page, page 96, um, that uh, RO is pre-released, uh, people have been talking about it a bit. And for those that might be having issues with the tech tree, you've compiled the most recent tech tree with all of the updates for, from these great modders. So PAP1723 uh, has come up with this tech tree, and we'll just go with that. And uh, I've seen that uh, on Porter John's Twitch, uh-oh, link not found, uh-oh, no, no, hmm, okay, well, we may be having a problem. Let's see. Best laid plans, I tell you. Okay, so I probably should have downloaded that earlier, huh? Before it got uh, nixed. But possibly it'll be all right later on and, uh, and PAP1723 is simply updating it. But for now, uh, let me run realism overhaul with the RP0 mod and see what the tech tree looks like and assess for myself whether it's a dire situation or a salvageable situation. Okay, so now just for reference, uh, Modja Manager loaded about 24,000 patches and on load up at this screen uh, we're using about 6.4 gigabytes of RAM. So that's where we're at. Um, we don't want to resume, we want to start a new career. I'm going to just keep everything normal. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, RP0 contracts are activated and um, I think everything else should be all right per normal. Oh well, I guess we should have uh, Kerbals level up immediately. We can do part G-force limit, Kerbal G-force limit, part pressure limit. I don't know about a lot of negative. Um, uh, as far as requiring signal for control, uh, realism overhaul, I mean, remote tech will handle that. Um, indestructible facilities will probably be safer. I've, uh, the rockets we build are so big usually that it's safer not to have the launch pad exploding all the time. Um, as some people might argue that it's normal for launch pads to have to be refurbished, but that should be just included in the construction cost of the rocket. Okay. So let's begin. Oh, uh, and rename it Career. Career. Okay. Okay, so first, uh, Remote Tech, uh, yes. And if you want to turn Signal Delay off, you would just click that. That's up to you. Um, that does add quite a bit of extra difficulty once you get to the other planets. You have to remember that there is a delay in the signal and work around that. And it's not always the most wonderfully consistent thing. Uh, see my Realism Overall series for more details. But otherwise everything should be fine. Um, for, well, let's do Tack Life Support first. Okay, and we'll say okay there. Choose a preset. So, Kerbal Construction Time preset, we want RP0. Because that's what we're doing. And so we save. And let's spend the initial upgrade points. You will want to be able to build rockets reasonably quickly. 
and uh, you might want to give a boost to how much science you do per year. But I'd lean more towards building rockets quickly. 0.5 build points will be fine. And you can buy points with 10,000 funds, but note that we only start with 25,000. So let's do it like that. Okay, so things seem to be working all right. Let's check our clouds. Uh, it's a light cloud cover. It's not very cloudy in Florida anyway. Um, this is the tech tree. And it looks like the tech tree is okay. It might not include all the parts that people want to see. Um, that's, uh, I'm sort of surprised that says non-RP0. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, if it says non-RP0, but it looks like it's okay, uh, I mean, it looks like it's a realism overall part, it clearly is a realism overall part, it uses kerosene, liquid oxygen, and all that. Um, the issue is that it's probably in the wrong place. This is in the wrong place. It shouldn't come here. It's not early orbital rocketry. So that's a problem that's a problem okay so uh, our problem right now is that this tech tree isn't uh, doesn't have the parts in the right place it really doesn't okay we still have some parts but uh, the tech tree isn't working let me come back to you with some sort of solution on that okay so what I've done is sort of an experiment I uh, just copied the tree.config from the 1.1.3 install of realism overhaul and RP0 and I'm going to try and open up career mode with that tree in I maybe I should just start with a new career but let's see if it rearranges the tech tree at all um, yeah okay so I have no idea what the tech tree issue is but Here's my, uh, my, my solution is, uh, it looks very familiar. Yes, this is the tech tree I used in my realism overhaul uh, series. This is basically, okay, I don't know what that's all about, but um, no, I, that's just because we don't have enough funds for that. Yeah, this is all very familiar. Mm, second gen capsules. Ah, well, we'll probably need to add those FASA uh, see, second gen capsules would have the Gemini capsule, I think, and uh, we need some mod with the Gemini capsule in order to do that, in which case uh, probably the best thing is to just add fast, uh, all of FASA instead of just uh, trimming out those parts. Not too sure this cockpit should go here, but it's not supported by, uh, see, here it says not supported by RP0 or RO, so just dump that part. That's one of those parts you just dump, and that'll save you a lot because um, that has the internals as well and so won't load those uh, but otherwise so we see that's fine uh, most of these parts are just fine with RP0 and yes they don't all say non RP0 now they are ready to go so yeah um, I guess I'll link uh, I'm sure they're working on the tech tree to update it and improve upon it for 1.2.2 and that's the issue uh, but for the time being, the 1.1.3 tech tree may be just good enough and workable. Oh, and for the AIES antennae, um, it should be all right with, uh, with RP0. Maybe, maybe not. It's up to you whether you want to use them. They might be slightly on the cheaty side. You'll have to look at it. But I like them. So, yeah, I'll, um, I guess the best thing to do is to, let's go back to our browser. The best thing to do is to go here, uh, not not here, um, go to RP0 or you could go through this uh, through the main thread, download the 1.1.3 version so um, just uh, go to releases page this is the releases page and get the 1.1.3 version and what you would like is um, you will have a folder See, I'm just going to go to my RP0 install that I use for the Realism Overhaul series. And uh, what you'll have is a folder called RP0, obviously, and you'll have this tree.cfg. Okay, that's what you want to copy into your folder. It's completely missing from the RP0 install here. So you want to treat, as you can see, the date is older than everything else in here. 
And yeah, what can I say? I guess that's the best you can do for now. Uh, possibly there will be an updated one in the thread and you can pay it with in the thread and you can sort of pay attention to the forum thread to see what updates there may be. But yeah, we'll go with that for now. Let's try and build a simple rocket in RP0 and see if it works. Okay, so trying to build a simple rocket. It's a lot more complicated when you've got a limited selection of parts and uh, these cockpits are not what we want. Um, this is not RP0 because it's new for procedural parts, this procedural avionics part. You could use it. It should be, it may be alright, um, but uh, let's try uh, the sounding rocket telemetry unit for fun. Now the sounding rocket telemetry unit is not, well, it, it really doesn't control much. Um, it doesn't have SAS and uh, basically it's just allowing you to uh, get a uh, signal from the rocket and it won't it doesn't actually have avionics which means that in RP0 you need to have a probe core that can handle the size of the rocket that you're flying so here this guidance unit can handle 20 tons that's gonna make a make things a whole lot easier all you can do with the sounding rocket telemetry unit is basically stage uh, as far as actually steering the rocket you're gonna have problems if you want to steer the rocket you better get a guidance unit at least the guidance unit um, still does not necessarily have SAS. Uh, you can see it has command, um, and but it does require a lot more power for it, and you can actually control the vessel with avionics, but you still don't have SAS here. We'll have to get some more technology to actually get SAS. But for now, let's make a little sounding rocket to test that things are working. Uh, we want, I mean, it's really simple. We just want, oh, uh, I don't have tweak scale in here. I really like tweak scale. Tweak scale would let, let you scale that nose cone properly, but that's all right. Procedural parts comes with procedural nose cone. And so we want a smaller diameter. And uh, maybe we, we actually want a parachute, come think of it. Um, Real shoots puts parachutes in their own category. We can have a parachute here and make it in line. So when dealing with real shoots, you click here, you go previous size, so you have to go into the action groups menu to deal with it. And then you can see, uh, you can size it to the right size like that. And uh, here's where it comes in handy. Uh, you can, uh, of course, do a preset. For Earth, I recommend pre-deployment pressure of 0.3. And then you can leave the deployment altitude just fine. You can see the wanted touchdown speed. Um, six is normally safe. And uh, if you click Apply Settings right now, it'll size the parachute to this bit. We'll want to come back after we finish building our rocket, our sounding rocket. Uh, and this is not going to get into orbit because we don't have that technology unlocked yet. Um, we just have a little Araby. We've got to see how far the little Araby is going to get us. The Araby is a curious engine. It's only got a 210 vacuum ISP pressure fed so we have to make sure that we have the right kind of tank for that and only one ignition no throttling uh, unthrottleable there's where you can check it'll say how much it can throttle in there if it can or not but it uses three fuels aniline furfural and inhibited red fuming nitric acid dash three <laughs> so it's it's a very peculiar sort of engine and uh, those are all toxic fuels. Uh, well, okay, uh, nitric acid especially. I don't know so much about aniline and furfural. Um, but we can see this fuselage tank type, which is heavier. If you recall, there used uh, in previous video, in the previous video, it said default, cryogenic, and service module. Those were all lighter than the uh, than the fuselage one. But we don't have that technology yet. So highly pressurized is true. So that's safe and uh, we'll just paint it um, no, that, that's okay and we can make it longer actually if we make it longer it sort of stretches the texture doesn't it now let's have something that's sort of neutral what does MechJeb say about the delta V and the thrust weight ratio well um, the thrust weight ratio at sea level is 1.88 it's got a delta V of 2649 we should put some science on it shouldn't we um, uh, this goo container is way too big. Maybe we should just put a thermometer and barometer for starters, right? 
As far as communication goes, um, this has a 200 kilometer always on omni range, and that you don't have to extend that. That's that's just passive. So uh, we'll be basically be going straight up with this. We're trying to get straight into space and do some science there, and that's it. Now this is just one engine. And does it have gimbling? No, it does not. One thing you have to watch out for is we if you added test flight, remember I told you about rate of burn times and how engines can randomly fail? Well, here we see that this this variant is called the WAC Corporal. And again, you can right click on here, uh, engine show GUI. And now the various variants, it all makes sense because we lack technology for the higher variants you see. So that's why you had all the variations of the engines that we saw in the previous episodes. So yeah, we're on the WAC Corporal one. And that has a rate of burn time of 50 seconds. Okay, how long are we burning it for? Uh-oh, a minute and 12 seconds. So this is overdoing it, isn't it? Uh, it's likely to fail before it actually gets up there. So let's reduce the length of this so that the burn time is only 50 seconds. That produces quite a high thrust to weight ratio, doesn't it? Well, that, that gives us an idea. Well, maybe we should have more than one stage. Well, we could have a decoupler. We get decouplers right away. And maybe we should have another stage with another Araby. We do not want the parachute staging at the same time. Remember, because we don't have enough avionics, all we're going to get to do is press the space bar, more or less. So we need some fins and perhaps spin stabilization. So it looks like we've got 3,173 meters per second here with a 1.4 thrust weight ratio. That's pretty good. Um, we want spin stabilization and uh, it says pressure fed. So in theory we don't need ullage. Hmm. Okay, well we'll see about that. In previous versions I seem to require needing some for these, but we'll find out. Let's use these basic fins. Oh, those are pretty big, huh? Well, that that's a little bit too big. Perhaps this is the time to use procedural wings early. Now, there's no point trying to use all moving wings because we can't move them anyway. To use the these procedural wings, you press J while hovering over it and then you can tweak the size of it. Still pretty big, but it's not as big as those other ones. Yeah, I'd, I'd still really like it to be a smaller sort of thing. I get the strange feeling it's gonna flip as soon as we try and stage there. And that's because uh, it doesn't have any gimbling and it won't be able to control its orient. We only need one. In fact, we can use one of these launch stability enhancers. These are a little bit more lightweight. Okay. Uh, that texture is stretched now. Okay, that, that gives us... Okay, so we'll call this alpha. I'm not gonna do a whole career mode thing. Um, I just want to see if it all works. If there's any obvious issues like, oh, I don't know, the KSC underwater again. So, I see an obvious issue. Why can't we build? Oh, um, it used to be that you would click launch and it give you the option of build, but now Kerbal Construction Time has build here. Okay, we've added alpha to the VAB build list. So Kerbal Construction Time works this way. Uh, you've got the button here and we've got this build list and we just uh, warp to complete and let's launch I've probably forgotten all sorts of things but first of all uh, let's make sure we ignite the engine first and then uh, have the launch clamp go so here we go throttle up SAS doesn't happen and that's it ignition and that looks like an engine launch we have insufficient avionics. Okay, we can see the rocket, that's good. 
But if I try and control the rocket, right now I'm moving my joystick and I can't. It's not using a uh, pitch roll or yaw or anything. It's just gotta follow the prograde vector. If you want it to be a little bit more stable, you could tilt these fins so it uh, spin stabilizes, but that might cause the fuel to be unsettled up there. Okay, the what I was worried about is that this stage would end right when we're going through um, the speed of sound and max Q, and that seems to be the case. Whoa, that's a lot of bouncy. And we spin. Vapor in the feed line, shut down, no ignitions remaining. Okay, so, um, well, it looks like I have revert flight. Uh, I'm not doing a serious career, mo career mode here, I'm just showing you how to do this. Um, so, yeah, if you can avoid staging while going through the speed of sound, that's probably a good thing. Um, I'm just gonna put another set of fins and also I, f I feel a little bit better if we have some separation motors too. Um, to give it a little bit of boost during separation. And maybe three to keep the whole three-way symmetry thing going. Yeah, let's just uh, have three of these and then have another set of fins here. I hate that they're so big though. You will note that the rockets don't cost much at this stage, but they also don't do much. So there we are. When it comes to the separation motors, it is my tendency to well, first of all, make sure that they go at the same time as you decouple, but also set them to three seconds to give you some time to light the next engine. Okay, so that will be good. Spin stabilization is still an option. Our thrust weight ratio down here is pretty darn low. And actually, uh, with the addition of those, oh, th these have tanks on them too. Our, our overall delta V is really low. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's due to that. Oh, we haven't actually reconfigured the parachute yet. So, this part isn't going to come down on the... Well, actually, we could put another parachute here if we wanted to. But, let's make sure that the parachute here knows... Oh, it actually got uh, unconfigured, too. That's bad. Apply settings. Okay, now it knows that it has to carry that bit down. So... Actually, I'll leave off the fins, and we'll just use these to spin stabilize. So I'm going to do a tiny little tilt on these like this. And then I'm going to do a counter spin on these like this. And the reason for that is if we continue spinning there, it's possible that the it actually uh, simulates the possibility that the fuel is shoved up against the walls instead of being able to get to the engine if you're spinning too much. So, yeah. All sorts of fun when it comes to the fuel. And we're going to build this. Okay, let's see how this works. This will be the last thing for today. can see a slight roll starting here, though we still seem to deviate a little bit. It's not a quick enough roll it seems. Also our thrust weight ratio for this kind of rocket is fairly low. We could do with a much higher thrust weight ratio. Notice test flight, whoops, test flight where are you? Test flight. No that's not a test flight. Test flight is somewhere. Oh, there it is. Is collecting data units. Well, we've got a uh, second ignition, but we're sort of more horizontal than vertical. We can still get data, but I really wish I had action group those, because it's really hard to get to them. Log temperature, 1.5. Um, hold on. We do have uh, 180 electric charge in here. Let's see. Transmitting.
Okay, well we've gotten our first signs flying over the Earth's grasslands. I guess maybe when we logged it we were over the grasslands. We actually were able to run the both engines for the entire duration. You can see this means mean time before failure. If you're using test flight that means on average you'll fail once every 10 minutes, which is pretty good. Could be worse. But yeah, alright. On this, I think we'll uh, leave it here. We've got a functional career mode. It looks like the glitch that we had at the end of the previous episode was just one of those things. It'll, it has probably something to do with Scatterer, usually. Um, but um, it doesn't seem to be hindering anything right now. And we've gone through the tech tree thing. Uh, look out for uh, improved tech tree later on. But with that, I'll say, oh, I can pop the parachute. Yes. Okay. So with that, I'll say uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.